The study, comprehension, use, and practical application of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is the most revolutionary act that can be performed by black and African people that will solve our problems and facilitate self-sufficiency, self-determination, and liberation. For generations, we have lamented about the problems in the black community. The ability to solve problems and provide solutions is one of the direct outcomes of the domain of mathematics. So it can be said directly, explicitly, without any hyperbole, that within STEM, within science, technology, engineering, and math, are literally the solutions to our problems. The first step in problem solving is correct problem identification or diagnosis. If a problem is not correctly identified or diagnosed, then that problem will persist or get worse. If a problem is incorrectly identified or incorrectly diagnosed, then inappropriate solutions will attempt to be applied, which only lead to wasted time and energy and compounded setbacks, failures, and frustrations. This is the context that my previous video about King and Pimba's letter about Africans selling slaves from their same tribe should be viewed. If slavery and colonization are the source and cause of many of our problems today, then correctly and honestly identifying and diagnosing what brought about those problems is the first step towards developing solutions. Diagnostics of the causes of slavery and colonization indicate that black African people did in fact have agency in the inception of those problems, and thus we should take solace in the fact that we also have agency in the solution to those problems. The word science means knowledge. Engineering is the application of knowledge or the application of science, and technology is the product of engineering. The word technology literally means applied knowledge. Therefore, to be dependent on the technology of another is to be dependent on someone else to think for you. To be dependent on the technology developed and engineered by other cultures is to be a slave to the engineers of the technology that you are dependent upon. It was technology, either in the form of weapons, textiles, jewelry, liquor, doctrines, and other inventions that enabled Europeans to entice, exploit, enslave, colonize, conquer, enforce, and perpetuate their rule over African people and the world. Technology, or applied knowledge in the broader sense, is the entity that is most spellbinding and captivating for African people by non-Africans. Religion, money, economic systems, weapons, and infrastructure are all forms of technology that keep African people in bondage, enslaved, and dependent upon the creators of those technologies. The importance of liberating African people from the dependency and reliance on non-African technologies is because an invention or creation is just like an offspring. It comes from a creator and therefore it has its creator's nature and likeness. A brainchild in the form of a concept, idea, invention or creation is just like an actual child in that certain traits and characteristics of the creator are passed on to the creation. A perfect example is artificial intelligence and facial recognition software that has demonstrated racial bias and discrimination. Therefore, a person, place, or thing has the nature and likeness of whoever created it. If the creator or inventor of a piece of technology needed for survival has a natural disposition that is not in favor of the survival and well-being of African people, then that piece of survival technology is actually detrimental to the survival and well-being of African people. In order for African people to advance significantly, African people worldwide must contribute their respective creative energies to the development and advancement of technology beneficial for African people. If African people need something, we should possess the knowledge, creativity, and will to create it, that is the science and engineering to develop the technology. As long as African people rely on others to do our thinking for us is as long as the problems of African people will persist. At this point it is reiterated, the word technology means applied knowledge, and therefore it does not just refer to electronics, tools, gadgets, and or gizmos but rather to any and all persons, places, and things that can be created, developed, formulated, manufactured, engineered, or invented by applying and using knowledge. Science, technology, engineering, and math not only allows you to develop free energy in the sense that you can light your house and drive your car for free or no continuous monetary costs, but also liberation energy in the sense that you are mentally liberated to know how to do whatever is needed to accomplish any desired goal, achieve any desired outcome, or create any desired solution. Science, technology, engineering, and math can create real black power, not just a cliche, but creative black power that can literally light your house, run your car, teach your children, and guide your government. An African scientific revolutionary movement can energize and galvanize African people and their descendants into the use and practical application of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics for the liberation of African people to be free of the dependence on others and to develop agency and self-determination. If Africa is the richest continent in the world in terms of natural resources, then African people should be the richest people in the world. 
Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics will provide African people with a means to identify, harness, refine, and leverage the natural resources of Africa to the benefit of African people. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics not only aids in identifying beneficial elements within your environment, but can also aid in identifying the detrimental elements within your environment to be avoided. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is the solution to the various problems, challenges, and issues that African people are faced with globally. The role of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in African liberation has three tiers. The first tier is scientific literacy. The reality is that not all people are going to actively work in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. However, if we create a culture which promotes STEM literacy, that is, scientific literacy, which also includes technological literacy, math literacy, and data literacy, then this will in turn empower the mental liberation of African people with scientific discernment and the ability to comprehend, analyze, critique, and make informed decisions based on any scientific information disseminated overseas. No longer dependent upon a small minority of experts, rather, creating a culture around scientific literacy essentially crowdsourced scientific expertise amongst the general public. The second level is employment. Complete technological liberation will be a slow and gradual process, especially after being technologically dependent for many generations. However, employment in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math have been historically and are currently some of the highest paid and best compensated employment opportunities. After being employed in one of the STEM fields for some time and learning the industry and business structure, the next step would be STEM entrepreneurship, where African people should strive to start a business or own their own company in one of the STEM fields. The companies with the highest earnings are companies in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math, and so it should be the goal of African people to create and control companies in these areas for financial liberation. And the third and final tier is nation building. The overall goal and objective of STEM and African liberation is to build a technologically independent African nation. This will require the collective energies of Africans in STEM to create our own infrastructure, economic system, political system, legal system, and any technologies that are needed or desired for survival and well-being. Essential to the job of nation building is civil engineering and systems engineering. If white supremacy is a system, and a system is a technology, and that technology has been oppressive to African people, then African people should apply the methods in systems engineering to reverse engineer that system and design a new system that is beneficial to African people, which African people can live and operate within. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics can free the minds, energies, and bodies of black and African people from mental captivity and physical reliance and dependence on inventions and technologies that were not developed or created by, of, and for us. Therefore, the solution to liberate African people from the spellbinding reliance and dependence on non-African technology is to engineer, invent, and create African technology.